Belcher was supposed to have been giving this presentation, as you might be aware. Um, she <coughs> phoned in this morning, 8 o'clock, and said that her husband was uh, seriously ill and she had to go with him to hospital. And, um, but before she left, she was able to send me what she'd written and do a wee transfer of 300 megabytes of video, which we can't watch because the sound doesn't work. Um, but essentially, we, I have spent a few hours um, going through what she was going to say and hopefully putting it into um, the third person, so to speak. I'm not going to get it right every single moment. Sometimes I might say I and I mean Leslie. But hopefully, it'll, be, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll work. <coughs> when we get to the videos, you have to well, sort of probably work. I wish I'd watched them. Um, but uh, we'll have to interpret what was being said. But they're not actually, they're not actually that important. I think they're just sort of breaking up uh, one person talking all the time. Um, although, although I'm, I'm talking on behalf of, of Leslie, I mean, I have been involved with, with art pretty, pretty much from the, from, from the start um, and how it evolved from uh, an idea in the Education Committee when I was on the Central Council. And, uh, and, and, and we, we, of course, you, you may know, we... In the Birmingham School of Bell Ringing, we are major users of, of art, and I think it's, it's worked well both ways, that the school has benefited from what art uh, produced, and art benefits from the fact that the Birmingham School of Ringing has used it so successfully. Um, Leslie, Leslie first heard of art at a branch AGM. She joined a group of ringers discussing training and nearly had to physically separate two ringers who were arguing very strongly for and against art. You can probably identify uh, with that. She had no strong opinion about art herself, um, but that discussion definitely got her wanting to think, wanting to find out more. And five years later, she's become the chair. And the person who was so anti-art at that meeting is apparently here, has uh, done two art courses and is here today. But I'm not quite sure who that is. Is it someone here? But, uh. Leslie and I have always been ringing teachers, but art has allowed us to be better ones. Leslie taught method ringing and striking, but would not have been able to teach someone to handle a bell. She'd never done it, she didn't know how to do it, and it seemed far too dangerous to experiment with. She went on an art module one teaching bell handling course uh, because she was curious, uh, and it was a revelation because, of course, she could teach someone to handle a bell, and she had to put it into practice. So she approached friends in a local band, and together they designed a tower regeneration project. This was regenerating a band, not regenerating the bells themselves. They had a tower open day, which got 13 people wanting to ring, uh, which just completely phased them. Uh, and just to make it easy, they decided to, um, to only give themselves a month to get all these 13 people up to ringing rounds. And uh, to make it worse, it was February, um, so there's only 28 days. They had, um, they had two towers, 16 teachers, 130 hours of teaching, and each learner rang rounds for the first time on open bells with the rest of the band. Uh, three of those learners dropped out, but 10 learning the ropes ringers and two accredited teachers were a result, including her. Now, they say she wouldn't have been able to do that without art, which is why she's so passionate about it. On a personal level, it's enabled her to do something she would never have dreamed of doing, and she's now introduced well over 30 people to this hobby. Leslie's experience shows how art can benefit the ringing world. It skills people up. It gives people permission to do things differently and provides a network of like-minded people who support and help each other. The same is true in the St. Martin's Guild. The acclaimed Birmingham School of Bell Ringing couldn't have happened without art. It gave us a structure without which we'd have thought it was just too difficult. We're not the only teachers who think like this, Leslie and me. Listen to what another ringing teacher has to say. Except, we'll have to just imagine what they were saying. <laughs> but I'm sure it was similar to what I've just said. So the art offer. We talked about the, uh, about the different teaching modules, particularly the one about learning to handle a bell. So the teaching models, the teaching uh, modules lie at the core of art. Um, and art's going to continue concentrating on those for some years to come. The demand is there from ringing teachers, 
and the need is definitely there. Art hears from people wanting to learn to ring, and they sometimes tell art quite how far ringing still has to go, especially when you get people who come from teaching in other walks of life. They look at the way in which a ringing does it and point out our shortcomings. For instance, there was a new recruit who was told he wouldn't make it as a ringer after only half an hour's tuition. And the lady who knew that being taught for 15 minutes a week at odd moments during the tower practice was not going to get her anywhere. She was so determined to succeed that she built her own version of a dumbbell in her garage. Her comparison to learning a musical instrument was not flattering to ringing. But wouldn't we all want that learner? Grit and determination can count for a lot. So as long as there are new keen ringers whose potential is being wasted, then art will continue to deliver its courses. <coughs> art has a lot more to offer than that. And before we go any further, here's another video which you won't be able to hear. <laughs> However, so we'll move on. But basically, I think it was just introducing the fact that there's the, the Module 1 course, which is about um, teaching bell handling, and Module 2 course, which is about um, running practices and, and entry-level uh, ringing skills. And that picture is of uh, probably a, a Module 1 course, um, and that's famed Claire McArdle in the, in the middle. Hopefully, one day, Dame Claire McArdle. <laughs> So we've heard about how art can make a difference to individuals, but what about the big picture? Well, art teaching modules continue to prove popular, and almost 3,000 ringers have attended at least uh, one of art's courses. 3,000 attendees. This year, art is expecting to run 60 courses, uh, and that's a similar number to last year, and last year was, was uh, increased because of ringing remembrance. So what sort of people come on an art course. Now, Leslie used the word ringers rather than teachers because it's not just teachers who come on courses. Ringers come for a variety of reasons. We get the curious. We get new teachers who often do it because no one else can teach in the area. There are those who don't want to teach but want to be better helpers. There are experienced teachers looking for additional ideas, new ideas to, uh, to adapt their own teaching techniques. Some come specifically to be accredited, if accrediting means a difference to their particular situation. And then we get a few, uh, art gets a few, who just want to improve their own handling style. So as you can see, not everyone who comes on an art course is interested in teaching, never mind accreditation. Leslie was telling me yesterday how surprised she was that over 25% of ringers who attend one of the teaching modules eventually do go on to become accredited. That's a figure that other national bodies that art talked to when art was set up would be amazed by. Cycling and swimming both said that we did not get more than 15% carrying on to accreditation. So what do people say about art? I remember the start, I remember right back at the start of, uh, of ART, it, it, it hit the ground running. Um, Pip Penny was a bit of a pocket dynamo and, um, and ran over a lot of people, trod on quite a few toes. Uh, she was very forthright in her, uh, in her beliefs. Um, to say that this day there are still people, we know there are still people who mistrust art, uh, criticise its standards, fear that it's the thin end of the wish, fear that it's going to stop anyone else from ever teaching. Um, and, and won't be in the same room as anyone who, who, uh, who proposes art. Um, but those, and, and those in at the beginning, it, wa it was clunky, it wasn't, it wasn't the completely rounded product at the start, but, but Pip very much felt that we just needed to, get, needed to get it out there, get it started, and, the, and it could be polished as it went along, which I think um, it has been. And, uh, and despite this, I mean, art has definitely prospered and grown. It's weathered the almost overnight loss of funding from the Ringing Foundation. Art was quite a, I think, quite a useful thing for the Ringing Foundation, which in, in its early days was struggling to find anything to spend money on. And, and, and art came along with a plan, and it was, it was quite easy for the Ringing Foundation to support it. Um, but then the Ringing Foundation um, dried up, um, or stopped funding it. Anyway, year on year, um, art does run more and more courses. Um, it signs up more ringers and is developing new products. 
people give incredible amounts of their time uh, to make this happen. Um, but they see the difference that art makes and, uh, and want to bring that to others. So what do people say? One of Aunt Leslie's first acts on becoming the, uh, the chair of art was to ask different groups of stakeholders what they thought of it. So she asked Learn the Ropes Ringers, she asked other art teachers and tutors, she asked the council, and, um, and three third parties, she didn't ask all the questions herself, she asked for and received anonymized feedback, always the best kind, um, about what art should do, uh, what it should stop doing, and what it should, uh, should keep on doing. And apparently it was a, a party to this, but it was a very interesting exercise. There was lots of support for what art does, ideas of things that could be done better, some interesting misconceptions, which show art where the message might not be quite right. So what did they learn? From the teachers or tutors, you, you might have thought that the teachers and tutors uh, would have given um, an, a Leslie an easy time, but um, it wasn't all uh, roses. Um, there were comments that art was, some of the key points, art was too uh, exclusive. Um, whether it was talking down to good teachers who haven't been on an art course, as if the art course is the be all and end all. Um, and, and there was a lot of, of resistance to just giving out um, art's teaching materials, which uh, wasn't really understood by those who thought everything should just be given to everybody. Um, the tutors talked about wanting art to maintain uh, and keep maintaining high standards, particularly uh, the quality of courses, but also uh, of accrediting teachers. There's nothing that can damage um, the, the brand and what art stands for than the people who quite are, aren't quite up to the standards you'd expect of teachers uh, slipping through the net. Uh, and they wanted to do, get more done about promoting um, group teaching. What did the Learn the Ropes uh, ringers um, say? So, as you can imagine, the, the actual tutees, the, the, those who've come through the program, were the most enthusiastic um, in responding, um, but they did include a few home truths. Uh, one comment, um, more than once, was that uh, art seemed elitist. I'm surprised at that, but uh, it wasn't the first time the word had come up. Uh, everybody um, said how fantastic their own teachers were. No one came back and said, um, I haven't been taught very well. They did notice a, a, a variation in standards, probably by, by at what stage uh, certificates were being handed out. Um, we certainly, I know we bend the rules slightly in Birmingham, especially when youngsters are concerned, you can't do everything. And where you need, you, it, it sometimes helps to have a, a, a regular flow of, of, of performance measure. Um, you don't have to completely stick, but it's a, it's a useful tool. There's a quote from one of the Learn the Ropes ringers. I quote my tower captain who has been teaching for decades. I was his guinea pig for him to get accredited with art. He loves the Learning the Ropes scheme and says he would never go back to his old way of teaching. That says it all. So what did the Central Council say? The, Leslie didn't have high hopes for full support, apparently. Um, but she did. She did get support. Uh, she was advised not to take up, take on too much um, and just deliver what was possible with the resources she had, which is always sensible advice. Um, to promote group teaching, uh, second mention of that one. Not completely sure of myself what that's getting at, but I'll find out. Definitely maintain teaching standards. If you're going to set your stall out as being promoting good teaching, you do have to do it. Um, and work in partnership, not in competition. So there are, as we sort of gaining from this weekend, there are quite a few stakeholders uh, in, in ringing, and we need to be singing off the same hymn sheet, or at least pulling in the same direction. So, it's obvious that art is doing some of the right things. <coughs> the core products, the courses are popular. Learning the ropes is appreciated by new ringers, and innovations like the art awards, and the art conference are being replicated, just as any good idea should be. Yesterday, the reason I couldn't be at the, at the meeting was because I was at the art masterclass. The art masterclass is run in Birmingham, organised by Stephanie Warboys, and, and is a day of intense um, teaching and giving of experiences um, to all those 
uh, people who've got to learn the ropes level five, who've got to the top stage. Um, we even had someone <coughs> yesterday who ran a touch of Phobos, Bristol Phobos Maximus at St. Martin's in front of a crowd of 20 people, and it was absolutely superb. So it's, it's one of my favorite days, along with the National 12 Hour Strike Competition, it's one of my favorite days of the year, and I wasn't gonna miss it just to come to a meeting, I'm afraid. <laughs> However, art cannot rest on its laurels. Um, is art transforming ringing teaching? Probably uh, not enough. Uh, there are 550 members of art, which actually only translates into 10 per county. Um, there are still the We Are Doomed Brigade, um, still has plenty of followers, and year by year, it seems that the average age of ringers is getting two years older. But art is now a more accepted part of the ringing community, and it's developed lots of good products and ideas. We need to get many of these more widely adopted, while developing new ones and giving the need an opportunity, as the need and opportunity arises. So what's next for art? Now, the next stage of, our, of, uh, of Leslie's presentation is actually a mixture of things that art is working on and things it could do. Not all these ideas will happen. Some might not work, some might be duffers, um, or there might just not be enough resources to deliver them. I think the focus on, will be on delivering a smaller number of things well. One of the things, if you are a user of, of art materials, there is a, the, the online tool uh, and the website you log into is called Smart Ringer. Now, the, the current version is falling apart. It wasn't, I don't think it was built on, a, on, a, on the sort of infrastructure that expected it to be used um, as it currently is. It can't really be quite adapted as far as I can tell. So it's been rebuilt. However, what this project has done is give a wonderful opportunity to build something that will not only work for lots more users, but give all sorts of other exciting opportunities to support both teachers and ringing. The development so far has centered around a new events website. This replaces a single web page with a list of courses in date order to connect it to an online form, which wasn't, uh, wasn't very user friendly to be fair. Uh, there was a lot of manual work behind the scenes. You have a look uh, later and you'll see it's what's been produced now is much more professional and slick it solves quite a few of the process and the system related problems that would have broken the system in advance. There's a story from one of the developers. When, when he went on one of the art workshops, the pre-course information he received was abysmal. He said, you don't know where you got, whether you got a place, you didn't know what time the course would start, you didn't know the location other than a town name. So it might be surprising that he got there at all. But when he did get there, the workshop was brilliant. A subject matter expert who knew her stuff and was so engaged in her delivery, he came away with much more knowledge and very happy. His poor treatment as a customer prior to the workshop gave no indication of the quality on the day. I think we'll find that, that has been greatly improved. There is also better after course support. And the biggest problem, <coughs> the biggest challenge at the moment is it's not getting people on the courses or the quality of the courses. The feedback scores are almost always excellent. The biggest challenge is what happens after the course. And this is the, yeah, particularly true in the, in the teaching of, of bell handling. And what art developed um, very, very early on was the concept of, of a mentoring system. Uh, mentoring enabling a new teacher to have someone who is more experienced who would hold their hand. Not, not lecture them or, or tell them they're wrong, but, but basically someone you could always talk to. Mentoring is it's important for all teachers, irrespective of previous teaching experience. If you've been teaching for a long time, you would still learn quite a bit from coming on one of the art courses. And after the course, it's about applying these learnings. Working with other teachers, often as a mentor, is a well-established way of bedding in new ideas without which it's so easy to revert to type or to forget things. For ringers new to teaching, good quality mentoring is critical. As we're all aware, you can't learn to teach a particular practical skill by coming on a course practicing on other teachers. Your student is just too good. 
So, as Leslie says, she saw one teacher go from one course without her mentor being there. She went on the course and then she went away without her mentor and started teaching a new ringer straight away. So she essentially started going from teaching a ringer who knew how to ring to teaching someone who hadn't got a clue. Members of the public taking their first bell handling lesson don't behave the same way that experienced ringers who are pretending to be learners do. The overconfident new teacher in that situation, almost, it's, I mean, it's a health and safety disaster waiting to happen. Uh, and, and, and potentially bad PR. So the mentor system was developed so that the experienced teacher is, is guiding the, the new teacher for really as long as they need to be guided. Um, the only problem is that of, of all the aspects of, of, of the art process that hasn't worked perfectly, mentoring is one. Is one. Uh, in the early days of art, mentors and teachers were paired up at each course. And it usually worked because there were a similar number of experienced new teachers, experienced and new teachers. Over the last couple of years, what's been found is that there are fewer experienced teachers coming on the courses. Luckily, there have been a bank of teachers who have been accredited and can now mentor a new teacher in their local area. But it's, it's, many to, it's, it's, it's becoming a bit more like one to many. Um, it, this helps us a certain amount, but it's still difficult to find new teachers, to give new teachers the kind of support that they want and need. Art's currently looking at ways of improving this mentoring system. There are things that can be done, such as improving how teachers find mentors before a course. This will help, however, we also like to attract more experienced teachers onto courses. Any ideas uh, would be greatly appreciated. Foundation skills. When did the word foundation skills first get used in, in changing and teaching? Bell ringing teaching. Not sure. There's a quote, um, a quote from our Australian friend. In Australia, we have a recruitment problem, whilst you, in the UK, seem to have a retention problem. I think that's, I, mean, I can't comment on Australia particularly, but, but there is certainly a retention beyond the bell handling stage. It is quite a bit of a problem. I think a lot of it stems from people not being taught particularly well. Art is serious about improving retention and has a number of products, if you can use that word, that can help. First of all, there are recruitment and retention resources that were developed a couple of years ago and are available to everyone online. Art's working with the Volunteering and Leadership work, work Group to produce a recruitment and retention workshop. An artist promoting the use of ringing simulators through a set of online resources and workshops. But why are the foundation skills so important? First, a story, and, and this is in, in Leslie's own words. When I went on my first art course, it was a module two, how to teach from rounds to early methods. I took along with me a relatively new ringer, as I wanted to go with someone who had recently learned how to ring and could remember it. As we left, I asked what she thought, and her reply completely wrong-footed me. I am spitting mad, was a polite translation. I must have looked confused, because she went on to say, well, I think I've wasted at least a year of my ringing life learning Bob Dole's inside. If only I'd been taught like that, it would have been so much easier, and I wouldn't have had to be taught out of giving up so many times. Just once, Art has been able to do an experiment, although we didn't realise it at the time. And this is an experiment that was at the Birmingham School of Bowen, in which I'm involved. The first recruits into the school included some absolute beginners, but also some people who were already ringing plain hunt. So we can <coughs> follow the, the rate of progression of those two different cohorts and where they come from. And it was quite clear um, that those who, were taught, those who were taught from scratch progressed further and became less likely to give up. And the big difference was that they spent longer at the foundation skills stage, doing the sorts of wacky things that improve bell control, the listening skills and rope sight that form the foundation of being able to ring plain hunk. Hands up here if you have rung twinkle, twinkle, little star. Most people. Not everybody, but most people. I think this is probably a, a disproportionate group. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 
think generally it might be might be unusual. <coughs> but the Trinkle Trinkle little site, it's just a fantastic tool, as, as you know. It's great for, for bell control, and it's just it, it just breaks up um, a, a course. We, we had it in last year in the St. Martin's Guild striking competition. We had a, a round of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and it worked really well because it enabled people who are less experienced ringers to be better than some of the more experienced ringers in their teams, because the more experienced ringers had never come across it and were taught by the learners. It was really, really useful. So the Module 2 course covers the teaching of these foundation skills um, before early method ringing. There was then a video of, uh, of Leslie talking about, um, about Module 2, but really it is. It is about um, different skills. They're not, they're not something that you ever, you're not practicing to do something on Sunday morning. It's, it's things like switcheroo, hold, pull and stand, uh, ringing backwards. All the things which are, are basically tools. It's like doing exercises uh, when you're learning to play an instrument. They are, they are tools to enable you to do something repetitively and skillful. They're not what you end up performing. Um, apart from the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, of course, which is a, it's a performance art in itself. <laughs> um, so up to now, these courses have been, uh, the Module 2 courses have been less popular than the, the art bell handling Module 1 course. Um, probably because people tend to associate art with teaching bell handling rather than what happens next. There's probably a, a lack of understanding about what the Module 2 course does. Um, saying that, it's not often that there are more Module 2 courses on the forward calendar than Module 1 courses. But today uh, is one of those. There are eight M1 courses planned and ten M2 courses planned. In Birmingham, we're trying to encourage tower captains to go on Module 2 because they're getting learners now who've come through the school wondering why their towers don't ring the sorts of exercises that they've been taught. And when they ask if they can ring switcheroo or something for their own development, the, the, the tower captains don't know what they're talking about. And we just want more, exp and these are not bad tower captains or ringing masters, they're very experienced, but they're just not used to the things that their own students are talking to each other about. Um, there are, I mean, they are basically better tools. There are better tools. I remember when I learned to ring bob doubles, and we, we basically went from round school changes, and then you went to plane hunt on the treble. And some people find it difficult, some people don't find it difficult. But what, what there are, there are much better tools to overcome some of the rope signs and other difficulties that learners find than just treble to plane hunt on five until they get it right. Um, there, there are things like penultimus and bisto and things with odd names. Again, these are not, these are not performances in themselves, but they are, they are tools. And what we've found is that, is that sending ringing masters and tower captains just to, just to see, they, they might only, they get bombarded with ten different tools, even if you only take one away. I don't know what they all are, I know what some of them are, and I know what some of them are, and I don't know which name they have. But the, the key is learning the situation and being able to see why the, the penultimus one is the one that's going to solve that particular student's problem. They are, they are effective. Not long ago, the concept of regular time, 22. The concept of regular dedicated the concept of a regular dedicated new ringers practice was almost unknown. Now more and more people are running them and they come in a wide variety of forms. So going back to basics, what's, what's the point of it? These practices allow newish ringers to have lots of high quality time on the end of a rope, which is a key to accelerating progression and stopping ringers dropping out. We all know that the best way of teaching someone to ring is not them just having their one five minute slot in a one and a half hour practice that ranges from entry level through to surprise major. And there are now good examples of people who are organising their practices in different ways, depending on their local circumstances. The Ledbury branch of the Hereford Guild wanted to operate a school, uh, like Birmingham does, but just didn't have the helpers. And their answer was to suspend all practices during one week of each month and set up Learn the Ropes practices instead. And actually, I thought that was a really good idea. We tried to do that in Birmingham, didn't work. Just, just different dynamics of how a particular area works, um, but it worked for the Ledbury branch, and it works very well. Tony Crabtree 
runs an afternoon simulator and tied belt practice every Friday. Um, Leslie says she was lucky enough to observe a Module 2F course there last week, and two of his young helpers were taking part. They were already excellent, confident teachers. Ringing from over 40 miles away, ring us from over 40 miles away, come to the practice, because there isn't anything in the local area. Sonia Field runs a foundation skills practice, travelling around different towers, and has had to start a waiting list so she doesn't get swamped. And the London Summer School runs six week rounds and beyond courses for London learners, supported by very, very experienced ringers. So it's great to see more and more people providing such practices which art actively <coughs> encourages through its teaching centre and hubs initiative. Sharing ideas and good practice through newsletters and online quarterly magazines which feature new examples of teaching. Leslie would like to work with the ringing world and the Central Council to get more people running foundation skills practices and setting up ringing hubs. 50 ringing things. Who's got that? Who's progressed through 50 ringing things? All the way? Gold certificate? Well done. Gold plus. Gold plus. Five Five nice. Well, this, this was put together. This, this just has music behind it. So I don't know if someone can sing, you could sing. But this just has music. But it was done by um, someone very recently, or, or a tower put this together to try and uh, specifically for this conference. It is really quite good. What you see at the end of this, all the participants in, in, who made this, this uh, video have received their gold plus certificates um, and they, they've ticked off everything in, in a year, even an 11 year old called Noah who I look forward to seeing on next year's uh, Learn the Ropes Masterclass. But it's more, I mean, 50 ringing things isn't just, isn't just fun, I think it's, a, it's an inspired uh, thing to do. Um, it's, it is targeted at those who are learning to ring. It introduces them to all aspects of ringing and gives loads of things to feel positive about um, when progressing, when progress at a local tower or their own practice is, is low. There's a good quote uh, Leslie's given from someone called Annie who had problems ringing plain hunt by place. And she says, I was beginning to despair about plain hunt. I'd become fixated by the fact that I couldn't do it. But taking part in the 50 ringing things <coughs> challenge is what made the difference. I told myself, but look at all these things I can achieve instead. And once I stopped worrying about plain hunt and started to relax, suddenly I could do it. I could count my place in the change and I knew it didn't matter about not knowing the numbers. Claire handing over the certificate of ringing, 50 ringing. So this is, this is Max from Harborn, and this is a good example of someone she's not really quite old enough to progress much through Learn the Ropes. She's not, I mean, she rings with Brunding as she just about manages it. But she's, she's had so much fun and, and learnt so much from, from doing the other things she can do. She might not be able to ring with the other kids all the time, but she has gone further through the, through the um, the 50 ringing things thing, and she is extremely proud. Of it. So, learning the ropes. I haven't talked much about that yet. So, learning the ropes. The the module one and module two courses are all about teaching um, people to teach, teaching people to run practices. Learning the ropes is the program that the that those who've learned to ring follow themselves. This is the program that takes people through your level one, level two, level three, through to level five. Um, and award certificates. So this is another of the art products, as, as you might say. And it's run alongside the teaching programs. Not everybody who's taught follows it. You don't have to. Um, it's particularly good with youngsters, um, but, but anyone can use it. It's, this is one thing which, which art which don't, doesn't think it's done particularly uh, brilliantly. It's not as used as it could be. Uh, and certainly the, the uptake is is patchy, which is a shame. In, in Birmingham, we are, Claire is looking at why it is that 
we're not using it at all in our towers. We, all the people who come from the school follow it, but we have other people and we haven't enforced it. And, and we wonder why um, we'll be thinking about it. But the good news is that there are now there are volunteers who are, who are concentrating on this and how to promote it. And, and the recent Learning the Ropes Festival of Ringing, the, the event in Bancroft, came about as a result of this. And uh, by all accounts, it was a great day. There were more of those in the pipeline and uh, a follow-up event planned in Norwich next year. It was open to all ringers. It wasn't just people who came through Learn the Ropes. And um, certainly had very, very good, good reports. There's a Son of Smart Ringer project, um, which, is, which is a great way, hopefully a great way, of making the Learn the Ropes offering much more useful than it currently is. Um, I, I use an example that we've got a, one of the drum dingers that you saw in that video. Um, she's quite uh, autistic um, and quite challenging. But the other day she came along and she said, um, I've learned, can I ring down? So you can't ring down, but I quite say that. But she can't ring down. She's not taught to ring down. And she said, but I've learned it on a video. <laughs> oh, right, have you? She said, she's asked, where? She said, YouTube. She said it was a person called Graham Nan. So, so, do you, so a, a, a child, a nine-year-old, if, if they want to find out how to do something, your first port of call is you go to YouTube. She'll have put in how do you ring down or whatever, and she finds a video. YouTube is not... The, the, the material on YouTube is not particularly well curated. Um, it's quite, probably quite fortunate that, that Susan found a great that video on ringing down and not that free bell tower where they just let the bells do whatever they wanted. Um, but, but I think this, th uh, this wasn't actually in Leslie's material, I'm making this up. I think the son of Smart Ringer needs, needs to be app driven. I think there needs to be, when, when you see the children sitting there at uh, Brumdingers, they're all on their phones. They, are not, they don't have laptops. This, this idea, well, aren't we clever, we have a web website. No way are they going to log into Smart Ringer on a website. They just don't do it. Um, one of the members of the, the, the Brumdingers team in the, in the youth contest, he doesn't use his email address. He, the, the only way of communicating him, with him is WhatsApp. So you've got, to, you've got to have different ways of delivering this sort of material to this generation of ringers. Um, so, so Son of Smart Ringer is, is something that is being looked at. And fast forwarding here, uh, as uh, 10 minutes left, I want to leave a bit of time for discussion. Striking. Interesting subject. It's not an overwhelming, obvious focus of the Learn the Ropes program, although it's sort of subliminal. Hopefully subliminal. Quote from Elva Ainsworth at an early art conference. Why is it acceptable for someone to shout across the ringing chamber to correct a method mistake, but a discreet word about striking can cause the same person to flounce out of the tower. We've all met them. This, one of the strengths of the Birmingham 12 belt band um, is that we criticize each other's striking. Now this is, this is a, a group of ringers who are really quite good, um, but there is no fear about saying to someone else, I think you're a bit quicker backstroke. Sometimes, depending on who it is, you might phrase it a different way. But there is a general acceptance that you can't always hear, maybe because where you are in a ringing chamber, you can't always, lack of focus, you can't always hear um, what you're doing yourself. And, and there shouldn't be a fear about saying, I think you're a bit quick. And that person might experiment, realize you were right, and, and it works. But there isn't a fear. But I think it's, it's very true what Leslie has said, is, is people are, there's this nervousness about telling people off about their striking, and there isn't nervousness about telling people off about their method ring. However, I think if you, if, if it's ingrained from the very, very start, if as people come through learning, focus on striking is just as prominent as the focus on, on execution and method ringing, I think you could get a generation of ringers for whom striking is and the correction of striking is just part of what happens. Um, and hopefully that will happen. Um, so the, there has been some, some work done on, on the teaching of striking, of, of, of striking and listening. It's a difficult thing to do. I remember when I was on the education committee, um, there was a, a listening course. I think John Harrison um, developed it and, and delivered it quite a lot. And it was, it was good. 
Art has got a half-day listen and strike workshop that's regularly run, and there are a couple of uh, striking workshops being run at next year's uh, conference. Um, there's, there, there probably should be more, and Leslie is working out the best way of doing it. At the start of the Learn the Ropes masterclass um, yesterday, there's, there is a, a 45 minute listening um, exercise. And it was done with a series of, um, of vignettes, of, of pieces of ringing um, on, uh, on six bells with, with good ringers. Um, but it goes through a, a, a series of, 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 sort of 30 second pieces where there are deliberate striking pots. So you, so you watch and listen to a piece of ringing where maybe the first one might be which of these bells has got persistent fault and it might be that just one bell is slightly quicker handling and then there's a discussion and, and as you go through over the course of this 40 minute touch um, series of, of films the, the, the tests get harder and it finishes with one where where people exhibit faults and then get better and then there's another fault and that gets better and you have to identify the order in which the bells were causing a fault and it's very good very good, um, and, and, and possibly that uh, we'll, we'll build on that and turn it into something that, that is, is useful and deliverable online. Now, I don't think you can, want, as, as Leslie and I we were together yesterday, and I thought, I don't think this can be a pass-fail thing. I don't think you can say, sorry, you're not going to pass your learn the ropes level five, your striking's not quite good enough. I think it, it's a difficult one to overcome. I think you can, you can help. You can, you can deliver the hope to help people deliver the skill, but I don't think it's a, it, it can't be a, I'm sorry, you, you, you failed here, tick box. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, do you, do, does anyone differ with that opinion? Mm -hmm. Just a couple of, uh, just a little bit left. Uh, another, or well, two, two more things, I think I'll quickly say, the two, two more things that, that art is, is focusing on and trying to develop um, programs to support. One is, is leadership. Um, there, is the, um, there is a town leadership course being developed, uh, or has been developed. Um, there are, there's a, a key piece of work, which I think is one of the more challenging ones, is a leadership development program, which might take the course of a, t take place over an entire year and, and expose people to, to various different aspects of leadership. I think that's I think it's a tricky one. Um, that, that might feel, fall into the this is just too hard category, um, but it's certainly worth thinking about. And uh, also, the, 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 the module one course and module two course, they're not, they're being changed slightly so that they are more deliverable to youngsters. Slightly different, slightly different approach, I think possibly slightly different exercises. It has, it's, it's been tested. It was tested, uh, I think the ODG Young Ringers used it, I think Sussex are looking at using it. Um, we're, we're, we certainly tweak it slightly with our young learners. Um, uh, but, but certainly the young learners are, are very... But what I find, and this might be your experience as well, the, young, the younger learners don't spend nearly so much time at level two, at module, in Module 2. Could you just clarify, do you mean running a module for young people who are becoming teachers, yeah, or for teaching Young Ringers? Uh, young, young ringers becoming teachers. Yeah, yeah. Young ringers becoming teachers. Um, and, and then this is the this is the summary. So things that art is already doing, continuing to run the core module one teaching bell handling course, looking at improving the after course support provided by the mentoring system. Um, module two courses, trying to increase this focus on retention. I think the the module two course does, it, de it delivers people with the foundation skills, which mean that when they come to ring plain, hunt, plain bob doubles, they're going to be better at it more quickly. It's a key point at which people give up because they think they're a failure. Um, and it's often not because they can't ring plain hunt, it's because they don't take their rope in or it, they've got some fundamental handling skill uh, for, um, fault. Um, there's the 50 ringing things I think is excellent, foundation skills uh, and the other focuses. So. And a, an overall theme that, that art does see that it should be, and I certainly see it as well in my, with my new hat on, that, that art and the council and the ringing world are all going in the same direction and need to have a degree of cohesive strategy. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope I have done justice to Leslie's presentation.
she was certainly gutted that she couldn't deliver it herself. So, uh, 